Well, I guess we're going to uh, do a timing belt on this, uh, what is it, 85, 86 Golf? 86. 86 Golf, anyway. Uh, diesel. It's Golf Diesel. Uh, my dad wants to do a timing belt on it. He doesn't remember when the last time was, so it's time to do it. Got to make sure. Anyway, uh, we're going to start taking some stuff off of here. Got to get the uh, air box out of the way and the timing belt cover and uh, this and that. Anyway, we'll come back to you when we've got something. First thing to do here is get this uh, timing belt cover out of the way. And on this 86, it just has some uh, spring clips holding it on, no bolts, so it's a fairly easy task. Anyway, we'll get that belt cover out of the way, and then uh, we'll see what's next. Probably the rest of the air box and the valve cover. Okay, well I lied to you. There was uh, one bolt on this cover here, and uh, goes upright this way. Anyway, it's right, right here in center. A little bitty 10 millimeter. Anyway, we're just going to stick it back in the hole and set this cover aside, and then. Uh, Looks like he's taking the top of the air box off of there. Get it out of the way. Got to get that valve cover off of there so we can position the cam in the uh, correct position um, at TDC. Get that cam in the right position so we can adjust the uh, the injector timing after a while. Um, so anyway, we'll go we'll go after that valve cover and uh, we'll come back to you. So my dad's there uh, taking the valve cover off and uh, down around on the left or right side of the car we've got to take off another lower shroud that goes over the crank pulley and the timing belt and uh, in order to get that off we've got to get the fan belt off so I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the alternator, get that belt out of the way and then climb under there and go after that other shroud. Huh. Anyway, he's uh, fixing to pull this valve cover off, and while he's doing that, I ended up uh, getting under there to get that other shroud off. I'm jacking this car up out of the way. Good place to uh, set the jack on these is uh, under the pivot of the front uh, control arm on the inboard end. It's a good solid place to put your floor jack and jack these cars up. And then you can set your stand underneath the uh, frame rail that's under there. Anyway, he's uh, going to get this cover off. Might we want a little block of wood and tap up? Is it coming loose? No. <clears throat> okay, it looks like it's going to be a stubborn one, so I got a little, uh, little block of wood here. And uh, we'll put it underneath one end of it and give it a tap. I don't know if you guys can see anything or not. Go ahead and pull in there and see. Am I at the right end there for that or no? No, I'm in on the camera. No, they can't see what I'm doing. They see your arm. I'm at the other end. Anyway, we'll see if we can do this thing here. Is that where I'm at? Yeah, right in here. I was going to get under the back end of this thing and uh, see if I can get a little tap with the, the baby ball peen hammer here. And uh, try not to bust anything else while I'm at it. There, it seems like it popped a little bit on that end. Let's go ahead and get this other end. Oh, it looks like he's got another visitor here. Jason showed up in his double cab, that yellow thing. And uh, he's actually a mechanic. Maybe he can come along and uh, make this go faster. That's, don't want to bend the hell out of this. I won't uh, seal up when we get done. Mr. Bold Man. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Anyway, we'll get this thing off and we'll come back to you. Well, the cover's off of there. See the cam. And uh, 
basically it's two piece gasket it's got a cork that goes all the way from the uh, down one side and around the back and back up the other side and then over the uh, front cam area there's a little bitty rubber piece that goes in there and then you just kinda seal up the two ends when you put it all together um, anyway so we got that cover off there and it was just stubborn no glue makes it nice for cleanup anyway uh, next I'm gonna go ahead and get that that alternator belt loose down in here and then I have to go after that uh, down in the bottom there that cover that's over over the uh, the uh, auxiliary shaft pulley and the uh, crank pulley down at the bottom um, in order to get that cover I have to take the uh, bottom uh, crank pulley off anyway I'll go after all that stuff and then we'll come back to it alright we're back at it here uh, got the uh, belt off and we took the uh, lower cover off there and uh, got to take the pulley off the water pump pulley off the crank end anyway once you get all that together then you take the uh, plug over here out of the back end of the transmission uh, maybe Inspection. and uh, right down uh, somewhere in here Let's see if I can position that where you can see right down in here and uh, maybe we can rotate that maybe we can't it's in there pretty good um, here we'll hold the camera right there Just have my dad hold the camera while I can maybe see what you're seeing there if I can get this out of here I'm gonna pull that center plug to get it out of my way first get the cover thing out should pop off. There's not just a ring around the outside. No, it's 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 on. It's just it's just on. Okay, it's just slipped over. I thought it was like gas can where they have that little ring to hold the cap so you don't lose it. Anyway, one problem we got is these these pliers here tend to slip out of their position. So we'll get a newer pair that I bought that still work right. Then we can get on there and. Maybe get that road right there. It started. It's just a uh, nylon plastic cap that goes in here, and it's on threads. And they get brittle in time, and got to be careful with them, or you break them. Anyway, we'll get this plug out of here, and then we'll be able to see the uh, marks on the flywheel back here. So we can position this engine at top dead center, and once we do that, um, we can begin to take the uh, belt off. Anyway, we'll be back to you here in a minute. Okay, I got you set up there. You can look down in there, and uh, I'm going to rotate this engine over until we get the marks up there. And then we got to check the cam out and make sure we're on the correct, uh, correct. Uh, I don't know what would you call it, the correct stroke, I guess, at TDC. Anyway, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go ahead and crank this the way it goes, which I believe is clockwise. I'll have my dad yeah. watch that for that mark coming up. Yeah, clockwise. Fine. Okay, we're going to watch the cam over here, I guess, to see where the loads are at. And uh, these diesels, they got a lot of compression, so it takes a little bit of oomph to turn them over. For fresh Two, 200 to 250 pounds in order to run. Really? Yeah. Huh, I read somewhere it had to be about like 400. Okay, okay so we're rotating this slow, way around. Slow, slow down, just go a little bit farther. All right. Bringing that mark up here. Right there. Okay, so apparently right there is TDC on the crank. And then uh, there is a, a tool which you didn't get to see. It's already put in place. I'll pull it back out of there and you can see it. Okay, you got this tool here. There we go. 
you got this tool here, it's a flat piece that sits on the sits up here on the uh, flat part of the head in the back and there's a slot in the back of the cam and then this other end here you can see will tuck into that slot in the cam and that holds that cam directly where it should be at TDC so I'll put that back in the, the slot is slightly offset so it can only be one way yeah, and the slot in the back end of that cam is not centered on the cam. It's up to uh, up higher on one side than the other. Anyway, that tool is now in there into the cam, <clears throat> into that slot, so the cam is held in the correct position for TDC. And uh, the crank down there, which you saw earlier, I think. I'm pretty sure you probably saw that mark come up is pretty close but it looks like when we uh, put that that uh, tool in the cam there it actually rotated the crank just a little bit so when we're all said and done here uh, things are probably going to be a little bit different than they are right now but anyway that's why we're doing this in the first place so Anyway, um, we'll get that belt out of the way and, and uh, probably be back to you. I guess I should show you one more thing about this. In order to hold the injector pump in place, there is a, uh, a pin, a dowel pin tool, which will go right in, uh, should be this hole, I believe. Um, it goes into a, a hole in the framework behind to hold that, that gear in place on that pump. Anyway, we'll get everything set up and come back. Maybe a little better explanation. Alright, so uh, now we've got our little block there in the cam and uh, we have a uh, socket up here in the front of this pump gear that goes into that slot. Anyway, that little socket there just happens to fit, goes in there and holds it in place. Now we're going to go ahead and take this belt off of here um, first thing to do is to loosen that uh, tensioner. the uh, tensioner here, so we'll go ahead and do that. Alright, so got that loosened and let's see if we can back it off a little bit. There we go. And then we should be able to get this belt worked off of here. I'm going to go ahead and take this tensioner all the way loose so it can come with it. The tensioner has a couple shoulders on the outside edge which tend to hold the belt in place. So it's not up here. Right, slide this belt off the front here. Just work it off a little at a time. Maybe. There it comes. Keep from dropping parts on the floor. Okay, so tensioner out of the way. Pull this belt off of here. And then, uh, just for giggles, you want to look at your belt to see how close you were to breaking. And uh, this one here actually doesn't look too bad. But uh, he's got 160,000 on this car, and uh, generally I think you change them probably about every 80,000. 60. 60 to 60,000 he's telling me and uh, anyway 160,000 on the car and he doesn't remember when he changed it last so it's uh, time to do it better safe than sorry end up leaving you beside the road and then you gotta put valves and whatnot in it so anyway he's gonna go over this thing and uh, we'll be back <laughs>